What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we are jumping into Avengers Assemble Alpha. The events of this comic are taking place after Avengers 62 and Avengers Forever number 11. And while we haven't really been covering much of the Avengers that is currently ongoing on this channel, this multiversal event is one that we cannot pass up on. What we have seen is the multiversal Masters of Evil, a group of villains from their respective worlds, some of the deadliest their worlds have ever seen, making their way across the multiverse. They are conquering countless universes. That is where Avenger Prime steps into play. He has been recruiting Avengers from across the multiverse, gathering them at Avengers Tower in the God Quarry. He is preparing for the battle ahead. Meanwhile, we are seeing Mephisto, who has been bothering Earth 616, traveling through time in an effort to unravel all of their history. Now we are seeing the heroes of 616 make their way to the prehistoric era. They are headed back in time, trying to protect the first Avengers. After Starbrand using the immense amount of her power, accelerating her age now elderly, she was finally able to send herself and the team to the needed prehistoric era. A story by Jason Aaron, having Brian Hitch, Andrew Curry, and Alex Sinclair all attached to it. This looks to be a very promising event. Now, make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we dive into this issue, we have Avenger Prime, who is finally leaving the Watchtower. After eons of being in the Avengers Tower, he is finally making moves, and he is headed to the the distant past of Earth 616. Upon his arrival, this is when he runs into the one and only Mephisto, with Avenger Prime letting him know that he is here to watch him be bested. Avenger Prime has come to watch him lose. Of course, he finds this laughable. After everything that they have done, after everything that they have conquered to this point, we have Avenger Prime who says Avengers Assemble. And that is where we see not too far off. The heroes of the current Earth 616. The Avengers are here. From Namor to Echo, from Thor to Captain Marvel. Our heroes are on scene, and they find themselves face to face with the prehistoric Avengers. Having individuals like Agamotto, Odin, Moon Knight, Ghost Rider, Iron Fist, and of course Starbrand. As these two Avenger teams come face to face, Agamotto lets them know that I hope you came prepared for the fight of your lives. While Iron Man comes out front and tries to let them know that they are not here to fight them, but they already know why. They know the murderers who travel between universes. They are ravaging Earth, what is known as the multiversal masters of evil. They are well aware of what they are supposed to be guarding here. They are the first of what is to come for 616. As Agamotto tries to let him know that he fears they may all already be here. This is when we see him covered in flame, screaming in agonizing pain. Iron Man already knows that this is the Multiversal Masters, that they are here and everybody needs to prepare. But that is when Odin looks over and he sees that they have a phoenix. They believe that this is Echo's doing, with Iron Man trying to calm everybody down, trying to bring this down just a little bit before it goes too far. That is when our prehistoric star brand grabs hold of Iron Man and thrashes him into the ground. Captain America going flying. We are seeing the prehistoric star brand lay down the hate, with Thor and Captain Marvel grabbing hold of him, trying to grab control as they try to hold down the caveman version of the Hulk that is also a star brand. There is a giant explosion, with Odin going after the Phoenix, Jane Foster going after Odin. This is an all out brawl. Captain America off to the side, just trying to get everybody to calm down, trying to let them know that they are here to help. That is when Ghost Rider steps into play as Ghost Rider takes on Namor with Agamotto trying to trying to convey some kind of words. With the immense amount of pain that he is in, he is trying
trying to let them know that they are under attack, but it is not by the Avengers. Not too far up on the cliffside, we can see a battle going on. This is Mephisto versus Avenger Prime. And while Avenger Prime is easily holding his own, what he did not anticipate was all the other Mephistos. Dozens of them begin to pile on top of Avenger Prime. All of their knives out, all of them trying to take his life. While he struggles to stay afoot, Captain Marvel decides that she is going to stop holding back, hitting Starbrand through a mountain and into another. We have the prehistoric Starbrand, who is lifting up a mountain-sized boulder, with Thor breaking it apart, using his lightning, and smiting down Starbrand. It doesn't take long for Starbrand to get back up and go directly for them. With being done and tired of everything going on, he throws Mjolnir hoping that that will bring the end to this. At the same time, we see Odin throw his Mjolnir as well, with it careening through the battlefield. That is when Jane Foster tries to grab hold of it, Mjolnir finding itself in a state of confusion, with everybody just beating the crap out of one another. That is when Agamotto stands up, telling everybody to listen to the words of the Sorcerer Supreme, that they all need to stand down. But before everybody stands down, we see Namor take the giant mammoth that is the ride of Ghost Rider and he throws it on top of him. Captain America able to stop him before he does any more damage. Odin and Jane Foster still fighting over control of Mjolnir while we have Thor's Mjolnir making its way through the battlefield. The two Mjolnirs clashing together. There is an energy explosion that can be seen from freaking space. This knocks everybody down on their butts. The Sorcerer Supreme, the only one left standing. This is when he shows his face. That is when we have the arrival of Doom Supreme. As their two powers clash together, Doom Supreme says that he has flayed and killed more Sorcerer Supremes than Agmato could ever imagine. Doing this across countless worlds. He goes on to say that if it's a Sorcerer Supreme that is Doctor Strange, his favorite thing to do is to take their hands. If it's a Clea Strange, he wants to take her heart. But for Agamotto, he specifically loves to take their eyes. This is when we see the eyes plucked out of our Sorcerer Supreme. With him out of the fight, that is where we have Starbrand stepping up, holding the limp body of Captain Marvel. Our Doom Supreme is not afraid, telling Starbrand that he has faced countless of his kind throughout the multiverse. He is going to test and see if this Starbrand can do what the others have not been able to, even with all the powers of the stars. Deep down inside, Starbrand is nothing more than a man, burdening himself with a man's sentiments, all the memories, the pains of loss, a weak man's rage. That is why he fails against Doom Supreme, with Starbrand grabbing hold of him and letting him know that this is why he smashes, with Doom Supreme letting him know that nobody smashes a Doom. As all the Avengers are starting to get to their feet, what we have is the Starbrand has been curled up into a giant red ball with Doom Supreme going on his speech about how this world is about to be conquered. We see his companions, King Killmonger, Ghost Goblin, the Black Skull, Dark Phoenix, Young Thanos, and the Berserker. Up on the ridgeline, this is where we have Mephisto, who is watching everything go down. This is the battle for the dawn, saying that 616, it must fall. It is the final piece, with Avenger Prime on the ground, having multiple knives sticking out of his back. He tells Avenger Prime that he should have thought twice about coming here. He should have never left the Watchtower at Infinity's End. Because this has never just been about Earths. The Earths are the fruit that they feed off of. But why should they settle for fruit when there is so much more at play? They want the very dirt from which the orchard grows. That is what takes us to the Watchtower. With Avenger Prime not being there, they think that this is a prime opportunity to take it for the road. Inside of the tower, this is where we have the Multiversal Avengers, with 
Captain Carter wondering, where is Avenger Prime? With all the devils now at their doorstep, the man that is supposed to be holding it off is not here. But they do have something that is very powerful. Something that they say is more powerful than the Avenger Prime. The most powerful Avenger alive in any universe. That is where we have the arrival of All Rider. Robbie Reyes has shown up on site. He is driving through all the devils with Ant-Man in his passenger seat. Ant-Man is letting him know that it is time to do the thing. It is time to flame on. But as he tries to do so, he lets Ant-Man know that he can't. He tries to become the Omniversal Spirit of Vengeance, but with only a flicker of flame, he lets it be known that he cannot become the Ghost Rider. Hey right, gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up on Earth 616, the Stone Age, the Genesis point. The fight for the entire timeline is currently at stake. They are fighting for everything that they have ever known. With Captain America leading the charge, with all of our heroes going in, one individual stands against them. That is the Dark Phoenix. We see all of our heroes blasted back, sending in Berserker to clean up anything that is still moving. That is when Berserker begins to get wrapped up. Something grabbing hold of him. That something is Ghost Rider. Our prehistoric Ghost Rider has come in. He has grabbed hold of Berserker and he burns him down to the very atom, pronouncing that that was for Starbrand and he challenges anybody to come up against him. Thor, Odin, and our Phoenix Echo. They let it be known that all of them are next. As an entire force together, we see the Avengers of past and present charge into the fray yet again. While Doom Supreme tries to take down Odin, that is where we see Valkyrie coming in and laying down the hate. Grabbing Mjolnir and smashing Doom Supreme in the face with the hammer. Giving the hammer back to Odin. The two of them combined go to take down Doom Supreme. Our heroes fighting with all of their might. As our present day star brand looks at the Hulk star brand. Starting off by saying thank you. Thank you for giving your life that way she could live. She only wishes that she had the strength to do the same for him. That is where we have Norman Osborn, aka Ghost Goblin, with Nighthawk wondering, what have you done? How have you done this to get this kind of power? With our prehistoric Ghost Rider letting it be known that he does what his kind always will do. He sold his soul for this power. But our prehistoric Ghost Rider lets it be known that he is the first of the riders. The first to grab hold of that flame. He is vengeance everlasting. And Ghost Goblin is nothing more but bones and skin. With a blast that could be seen from freaking space. With our Ghost Rider leaving a hole right in the middle of Norman's chest. Ghost Goblin is taken out of this fight instantly. And Nighthawk lets them know. He lets the prehistoric Ghost Rider know that they are both children of Mephisto. But they have to be better than the evil. That they have to be better than him to win this. But our prehistoric Ghost Rider, he thinks differently. Letting Nighthawk know that he is wrong. He believes that they have to be much, much worse. That is when Doom Supreme, he decides to just go nuclear with this. Mephisto playing his own games. Usually, they're able to take out this stuff without any problem. Or 616, they find themselves at an impasse. And so what Doom Supreme does is he goes to target all of the ape men that find themselves hiding away in caves. He releases a plague upon the world. A red mist that starts making its way through all of the valleys. Our prehistoric ancestors begin to slowly die as many of them run as fast and as hard as they can. That is when Valkyrie and Ghost Rider go to try and stop this. The prehistoric Ghost Rider using his flame. This flame begins to extinguish some of the plague, but it's not enough. 
the storm is spreading far too quickly. And while Valkyrie's all weapon can make gas masks, she simply can't make enough in time to save everybody. This is when Ghost Rider asks Valkyrie a question. You have seen what this world becomes. Is it worth it? With Valkyrie saying despite all the evidence to the contrary, she can tell him with every fiber in her being that yes, it's worth all that and more. With Ghost Rider telling her to see to it that it is. We see him on his mammoth bursting into flame, running into the mist, running into the plague. We see him release the full might of his ability. One moment of pure beauty. The inferno engulfs everything and this dissipates the plague. The red mist taken out completely but it cost the life of prehistoric Ghost Rider. But he save them. All of the eight men that will eventually become what we know as the Avengers. The ancestors save as this fight rages on. That is where we are taken to distant space. A fireball cutting its way through all space and time. That is where we see her. The true mother of Thor. The goddess. The phoenix. She is coming. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with the arm army of Mephistos making their way towards the tower. We are in the God Quarry, the Avengers Tower at the heart of existence. The age of Mephisto is about to begin. It all starts with taking this tower, but this is a multiversal war, which means we have a whole slew of heroes that we are going to see brought out to fight against this force. The one leading the charge is none other than Captain Carter. By her side is Weapon America, but there is so much more than that. This is where we see the Howling Commandos. This is an all Steve Rogers fighting force. As we see shields flying through the battlefield, the charge is fully underway, doing their best to hold the line. We have Captain Carter yelling for the dream, the battle cry for our Steve Rogers. There is no holding back. This is an all out bloodbath. While the Howling Commandos, they take care of ground forces, we have Mephistos that are flying up in the air, having the Devils airborne. They are taking heavy fire on the ground. That's when they call in the Air Cav. That is when we have the arrival of the Carol Corps with the SS Marvel launching all of its fighters. While the Mephistos believe that they had the air superiority, they no longer own it. As the Howling Commandos make their advance, the Carols taking care of all the air assets. That is when we have a new player hit the scene. We are getting giant 20 story tall Mephistos, but Captain Carter has an answer for them as well. That is where we see Thor, God of Fists. With one giant punch, he knocks this giant Mephisto down to the ground. And the God of Fists, he makes quick work of this giant. But this is just one. There are many. But Thor, God of Fists, he's not the only heavy hitter on this team. That is where we have the arrival of Star Panther. As he comes in blowing right through the brain of some of these Mephistos. Star Panther is going to take care of all the other giants. While the ground forces, they focus on the smaller guys. The ones trying to get into the tower. With the battle ensuing on the outside, we go inside Avengers Tower. This is where we have the invincible Ant-Man aka Tony Stark. Inside the tower, he is meeting up with Vision and Moon Knight. As they have their quick reunion, letting it be known that Robbie Reyes, he is having a hard time right now. He may be the All Rider. The problem is, he cannot get his powers. Something seems to be blocking his connection. Maybe it's burnt out, maybe it's something different. But with Robbie out of the picture, one of the heaviest hitters that they have on their team, he is inoperable. This also means that our team, they have to make something else up. They have to find another way of taking down this army that stands at their gates. This is when Tony gets an idea. Suiting up in his Ant-Man suit, he lets Vision and Moon Knight know that he's got a plan. 
This plan makes them super small. Going and following the ants, they are making their way underground. What Tony would like to do is tunnel underneath the Mephisto's main position, take them by surprise, maybe take out the leadership super easily. This not being a new tactic, but one that was actually used in World War II, I believe. But as they venture through the underground tunnels, this is where they run into Mephisto's. They are digging their own tunnel, but they're not trying to get under Avengers Tower. They are going straight down. They are nearing the border with the first firmament. If they can access the universe of ancient energy, all of it that lies underneath the other side of this bedrock, it's game over. And so with the plans changing, we have Ant-Man jumping into the fray, throwing punches left and right. While they try to hold off these forces, an army of screaming devils, Avengers from all over creation. This is a battle unlike any other. With Moon Knight, Vision, and Tony Stark all looking like they may be done for. Moon Knight telling Vision to get Ant-Man out of here, to keep him protected. That is when they hear a voice. A voice that is coming to help them. A voice that is their savior. This voice is the voice of Old Man Phoenix. Arguably the most powerful Wolverine to ever exist. And he has not come alone. Standing by his side is King Thor's granddaughters. They have come to join the fight. They have come to take on Doom Supreme. All right, gang, so as we dive into this issue, we have been battling for nine freaking days. This war has raged across the globe. Entire forests have been burned in the ensuing battle. They have done catastrophic damage, not even sure what this is going to do to the timeline. But right now, the only thing that matters is winning this war. This is where we see Iron Man going in on King Killmonger. Killmonger believing that he killed Iron Man three days ago. Iron Man is not coming here by himself. He is giving Thor, Captain Marvel, and Odin the opportunity to blast King Killmonger right in the freaking face. With this doing significant damage to him, King Killmonger is not done yet. That is where we see the prehistoric Iron Fist show up. We learn that she is not fighting for hope. The only thing she feels left in her after all of these days of battle and losing Ghost Rider. She feels rage. All she has left is rage and punching. And that is where we see her bring down King Killmonger with his blood strewn across the ground. This is when Iron Man, he hears a voice calling him going deep into a cave. This is where he finds his father, Howard Stark. And Howard is letting Tony know that he is here to save him, to help him, with Howard going on a whole long speech about how together they can make a better future, that the future needs to be shaped by the two of them. It doesn't take long for Tony to recognize what is going on here. This is in fact a puppet of Mephisto, this is the Iron Inquisitor with Tony blasting Howard backwards. An EMP goes off which takes off all of Iron Man's suit, having no more iron to hide behind. Howard Stark goes in on Tony. That is where we pick up with Nighthawk and Moon Knight. The two of them are currently in the battle with Black Skull. From left field, that is where we see Captain America with a flaming shield. He comes in and he knocks Black Skull down. As they have him restrained, we see the symbiote begin to crawl away. It crawls away and it attaches itself to young Thanos. And with them becoming one, all of our heroes are doing everything they can to take him down. As we pick back up with both Howard and Tony, 
they are going fist to fist. Using their surroundings, Howard grabs a rock and he smashes Tony in the face. The two of them are both bloody, they are beaten, and they are bruised. But Tony Stark, he's still got a ton of fight left inside of him. That is what takes us to our Phoenix, Echo, and Valkyrie. They are currently facing off against the Dark Phoenix. Even as they are able to get close, they are able to lay down some heavy blows. Dark Phoenix is still able to send them flying. This is when Phoenix Echo calls on all timeline Phoenixes. Throughout the timeline, throughout the time stream, from 66 million BC all the way to 1943. Anybody who has ever held the Phoenix, they are lending her power as she charges head first directly into Dark Phoenix. Down on the ground, they are needing help with Black Skull. They need fire and they need it now. That is where Phoenix and Dark Phoenix, they come crashing down with Thor and Odin using both their Mjolnirs to hold down the symbiotes. There is a thunderous crash, flames in all directions. The symbiote still trapped under the Mjolnirs, but Kid Thanos was able to get away. But now they look for the Dark Phoenix, with Iron Man here telling everybody to spread out. Iron Man is able to slip away, but this is not Iron Man. We learn that this is the Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix is Mystique. As the Avengers, they span out and they go looking for Tony Stark. Tony has been able to suit back up, and now he has the advantage. Grabbing Howard's hands, he breaks them. With Tony destroying Howard's armor, he no longer has his iron suit, no longer having the hands to rebuild it. He lets Howard know that he is going to sit right here, and he is going to watch as Iron Man and the Avengers take down Mephisto and all of their plans. That is what picks us up with Doom Supreme. The Dark Phoenix coming up to him, saying that he is a coward. That he has been hiding while the rest of the Multiversal Masters, they have been out here falling left and right, while Doom does nothing. As Mystique goes to blast him with the Phoenix Force, she learns that he is not here. And so if Victor is not here, where is he? And what is his true goal? This is where we see Doom Supreme. He has gathered his forces. He has gathered his army. Thousands upon thousands, an entire world full of Doom variants. Doom Supreme is about to lead his army into battle. Alright gang, so as we dive into this story, we are picking up with Old Man Phoenix who is severely wounded. The one to put him in this condition is none other than Mystique, with Logan going ahead and trying to have a conversation with her, knowing that his end might be very close, telling her that he can't even recall how they had met, that it has been so long. They have do been doing this back and forth for eons at this point. But Mystique remembers everything. The two of them in Mexico in 1921 facing off against a firing squad. Going on to say that she has never been a fan of Logan. That is because they are exactly alike. But yet somehow, Logan is the one with the lemonade. Mystique is the one left holding the lemons. But she promises Logan that this dance that they have been doing is far over. That all of this ends right here and right now. With what energy Logan has left, he gets up and he attacks the Dark Phoenix. As the two of them battle, this is where we see Mystique go inside the body of Logan. And she sends pieces of Logan flying in all directions. This is where the goddesses of thunder come into play. The granddaughters of Thor. They are using Thor's hammer to guide them to the pieces of Old Man Phoenix. What they are trying to do is gather up all the pieces and stitch him back together. As they do this journey, coming for one of the last pieces, it is Old Man Logan's head. And that head is currently in the hands of Mangog. The three goddesses, they battle, trained by King Thor himself, the last of the Asgardians, the last of all the gods. They are able to defeat their foe, 
as they traverse all of these planes looking for Old Man Phoenix. They started off with one Mjolnir, but now they have dozens upon dozens of them. This only makes the sisters a little bit terrified, because whoever their enemy is, they are laying waste to Thor and Phoenixes alike. Do they really belong in such a war? That is what takes us to present day at the God Quarry. We have Old Man Phoenix that is now fully put back together. He is here at the God Quarry. He has come to fight in this war. And the three goddesses, they get what they have always wanted. A war to call their own. Each of the three sisters hitting the battlefield and just laying down the hate. Nothing can stand in their way. With Dark Phoenix currently out of the picture, there is nothing to stop Old Man Logan. To kinda add insult to injury to all of Mephisto's forces, this is where the sisters drop the Mjolnirs. Every single one that they have collected, and those hammers go falling from the heavens. Like mystical mortars dropping onto the battlefield, this causes all of the Mephistos to go into a full retreat. As our heroes regroup, they get ready for another attack. They are trying to figure out why the Mephistos had been digging into the ground. With Old Man Phoenix letting us know that this is the God Quarry. The bedrock of everything. The tower is simply here just to protect it. What is important, it all lies underneath the surface. But as it looks like the battle had been won for the day, Robbie gets in communication because something is going on. Alarms are going off. When all of our heroes look to Avengers Tower, what they see is doom. His planetoid coming down and it completely obliterates Avengers Tower. Doom letting it be known that all Dooms are in full attack. Their job is to keep the Avengers at bay. He is going to claim the rights to all of existence. He does this in the name of the Doom above all. With Old Man Phoenix and Star Panther going after him, they are quickly learning that they are outmatched. They don't have the sorcery, the magic, to be able to take him on. That his magical barriers are much stronger than anything that they have ever faced against. This Doom is a Sorcerer Supreme. They need somebody with the magic capable of breaking through. That is when a portal opens up and we have Avenger Prime apologizing for his tardiness. Walking onto this battlefield, Avenger Prime removes his helmet, and we learn that this is Loki. Alright gang, so with Avenger Prime showing up on the battlefield, having mere moments to really explain himself, he starts to go into detail on exactly who he is. Because when everybody else sees that there is a Loki here on the battlefield claiming to be Avenger Prime, Obviously, many people, they have questions. But this Loki story starts on the happiest moment of his life. The day that his brother had died. But it wasn't at the hands of Loki. In the end, he died trying to tame the hammer. Mjolnir with a mind of its own. It had flown the young prince of Asgard into a sun. It burnt him to a crisp, returning nothing more than Thor's hand. And Odin was never the same after that day. By the time Loki had reached adulthood, he had already overthrown his father. Selling Odin off as a slave to the Frost Giants. He found himself sitting upon this throne by himself. And he felt the loneliness begin to creep in. The emptiness that he was now feeling. In search of an answer on why he felt this loneliness even when he got everything that he wanted. Using his sorcery. Using the power and the magic of Asgard. He was able to open up gateways to other universes. This is where he started to sit down with other Lokis. But he soon found that himself out there in the vast multiverse, it was always the same. They always tried to kill him, to take his power. 
One thing he learned is that a Loki cannot be trusted. And so he goes in secret, looking at all of these Lokis searching for an answer. Why were Lokis such despicable creatures? What he observed was one failure after another. That Lokis were foul and they were despicable because Lokis always lost. He was the one Loki that was an anomaly. One who was graced with a throne. The most powerful sorcerer in his reality. His variants across the multiverse. The only thing they were good at was losing. Most often, they fell to the hands of those that called themselves the Avengers. When Earth's mightiest heroes would inevitably find themselves first drawn together to fight a foe no single hand could ever do, the foe was always Loki. Taking away a single lesson from all of these encounters. No more Avengers. Going back to his reality, he ensured that no one would ever become the Thunder God again. That no one would ever find Captain America's body. That Iron Man would never put on that suit. He sacked Wakanda. He slaughtered every Kree half-breed he could find. He obliterated anyone in the world who might someday feel the urge to avenge. It is only after he defeats the Avengers that he realizes he found a way to lose. In his haste to dismantle the world's Avengers, he forgot that it wasn't just Lokis that they gathered to fight against. That is when we have the Mad Titans, the God Butchers, the World Eaters. They all descend down on Loki. Against them all, Loki stood alone somehow prevailing, pushing his sorcery to levels beyond anything that he ever imagined. But all magic comes at a heavy cost. The cost was every single living life in his universe. He had done it. He defied the curse of the Lokis. He had finally won. And though he felt just a faint flicker of joy, the only time he felt that flicker is when he decided to throw himself into the sun. But even trying to take his own life, he found that he would be a failure at it. Instead, he finds himself at the God Quarry. He finds himself at Infinity's End. On this day, he did what no Loki had ever done before. He dropped down to his knees and he prayed to the God Quarry. He prayed to this unseen power, asking for his life to come to an end, to be sent to oblivion that he believes he so rightfully deserves. But the answer he got back was something he didn't expect. The God Quarry told him no, that he would not be allowed to die until he served a penance. No more Avengers had been his cry, but the multiverse had shown him that Lokis were always fated to be the force that brought the Avengers together. And so, as the greatest Loki who has ever lived, this was his new task. This was his new job. Assembling the Avengers forever. They built the Avengers Tower at Infinity's End. He assembled the mightiest Avengers in all of Infinity. When the work was done, he confessed to the assembled heroes of his many crimes. Many wished him dead. Others wanted him to stay in the tower forever, to serve out an eternal sentence. Now, of course, all of these heroes, they came and went over the eons as needed. The Deathlocks were his most trusted soldiers. For so long, they had operated in the shadows. But now, he finds himself needing to make first contact with Avengers from a very particular universe. That is what brings us to present day. Doom's planetoid coming down on Avengers Tower. The Doom army making their charge. Screaming in the name of Doom. But Loki lets them know that that name, it has no power here. By all the forces of multiversal magic in the universe, we see Loki let loose his sorcery, wiping away entire garrisons of Doom's army. This gives them just a little bit more time. Because the Avengers, all of these heroes, they know Loki. Obviously, many of the heroes have questions. They're not sure if they can trust him. 
a Loki being the person to always stab you in the back. This is where they see that he is hurt. He had battled against Mephistos. Not sure really how he was even able to survive this encounter, but he slaughtered a good amount of them. But even him doing this, they still bring into question how we could trust you. How do we know that you are in fact a redeemed Loki? And he knows that their trust is going to be hard earned. He knows what his counterparts have done throughout the multiverse. And so as an offering, he has brought a gift. As he opens up a portal, this is where we see the Avengers of 616. They come through that gateway and they are ready to fight. Gang, so we are picking up at the God Quarry. This is the rubble of Avengers Tower. The tower was recently taken down by Planet Doom. But throughout this issue, what we are getting is a letter written by one of the Steves, talking about his exploits, talking about everything that they have seen, everything that has stood before them. From fighting an army of Mephistos, to the gathering of the Carol Corps and all the Steve Rogers. From all of the Doctor Dooms, to the Doom Supreme and Loki going toe to toe. A retelling of this story simply isn't enough to do it justice. This is a battle of the most epic proportions. With the Valkyrie taking her whip chain that has three Mjolnirs attached to the other end. She cuts her way through dooms. And though this is a spectacle to see, there are many that have fallen, barely getting a moment to breathe. This Steve finds it hard that a 98 pound nerd from Brooklyn is out here fighting with the best of the best. As we make our way through the battlefield, we have a funny, quick conversation between both of our Tony Starks the Iron Man and Ant-Man. Ant-Man revealing that he got sober to come and do this. The Iron Man Tony Stark recognizing that this is probably the only reason that he ever became Ant-Man. Because he is a drunk. That is the only logical answer on why he would be Ant-Man and not Iron Man. Or as Guardians taken down droves of doom. But even with them taking out so many of those dooms, there is still Planet Doom. Now this seemed to be more of a spaceship or, or maybe like a space station. But we are seeing that this is in fact a sentient doom. This planet is very much alive. And it is just decimating the ranks of Steve Rogers. With Old Man Phoenix and our Phoenix Echo both saying that we gotta do something about this. That is where they call in Star Panther. We see Star Panther come flying in with Star Panther coming in. He goes right into the forehead of this planet doom. Cracking out the other side, he lets us know that he cracked multiple continents. He ruptured the mantle and outer core. He is about to make his roundabout and go at it again. Picking up on the ground, we have our young Steve, the one who has been writing the letter and giving us the narration throughout the beginning of the story. Having his shield, wielding one of the Mjolnirs, he saves a Steve Rogers life. Recognizing that he has got to get to the medic, the life of the Steve Rogers that he saved. He gets up, he picks up Steve, and he goes to take him. The young Steve telling him to take the hammer, refusing to do so, saying that the hammer belongs to him, that he cannot wield it. That is when Doom and Agamotto go at one another. Doom turning his lungs to freaking acid. This is taking him out of the fight, which means it is Doctor Doom and Loki. Doom giving Loki the opportunity to stand down, telling him to cast aside this Avenger Prime idea and be the backstabbing god that we know you are. That is when Namor comes in, knocking Doom for a freaking loop, saying that no Avenger stands alone but also turning to Loki and letting him know that if you do betray us, you are going to be facing against me. As they battle against the Doom, we have Star Panther, who has just taken out the eye of this planet Doom. This is the opening for Old Man Phoenix and Echo Phoenix. They make their way inside of this planet and they start carving out canyons, telling everybody on the ground that they have to be prepared, because this planet is falling. The blood is spewing everywhere, a tidal wave of molten doom blood. 
as Loki and Doom battle with swords. Magical weapons that they have manifested, looking like a scene between Obi-Wan and Anakin. With this molten lava blood coming up, it spills all over the place. Our Doom falls into it, and we have him facing off against Namor deep in the depths. Picking up with our two Steve Rogers, the young one giving the letter that we have been narrating throughout the comic. But the thing is, he has no one to give it to. It is addressed to who it may concern. Whoever they might be, wherever they are among all of these Earths, he hopes them well. He hopes to see them soon, dropping Mjolnir and Dooms closing in on them. We see this other Steve Rogers pick up that hammer, and he starts laying down the hate. This is where we pick up with Marvel, Nighthawk, and Thor. They have made their way into the depths of all of this. They have been looking for the Mephistos, not sure where they are or where they went. This is of grave concern. That is when a giant foot comes down. There is a little tiny Mephisto that was left behind. But when this giant foot comes down, it squishes it and it absorbs it into itself. Because what we are seeing is all the Mephistos, they have been absorbed into one. Welcoming the Avengers to the end of everything. Alright gang, we are picking up at the Genesis Point Earth 616. We have the Kid Thanos and we have Mephisto. Thanos is letting it be known that Ghost Goblin has fallen, Black Skull stripped of his symbiote, and King Killmonger had his face beaten in by the Iron Fist. And then there is Dark Phoenix and Doom, they seem to have fled the timeline completely. But Thanos is staying behind for knowledge. He stayed behind so he could gather all of this, this was the point of him staying and even coming to begin with. But Thanos is telling Mephisto that his grand plan to rewrite Earth's history has been an utter failure. But Mephisto's not necessarily devastated with this failure. Being the king of hell, he has come to learn to always expect pitiful results from humankind. Even then, they managed to surprise you in their capacity for woeful disappointment. But Mephisto leaves, leaving the young titan a good tiding telling him that he wishes him well on his quest for knowledge. Mephisto is going to take on the Avengers by himself. This is where he walks into a portal, this portal taking him to the God Quarry. But when he arrives, he definitely has some people to answer to. That of course being the Council of Red. And while he snidely replies to them saying that he apologizes, but he's not sure what he has done. What we see right here of the Council of Red, this is all that remains. The others had fallen in battle. Mephisto of 616, he lied to all the others. He said the resistance would be minimal, but there are more Avengers here than they ever expected. Mephisto only cares about the cracks in the ground. Quite the army, but such a heavy impact. The cracks are forming in the bedrock of the God Quarry, and now that Doom has come with an army of his own, those cracks will spread. It will do this until the ground is so broken that he can shatter it with his own fists. And then, at last, he can unleash what lies beneath. This is when the Council of Red let him know that he's not doing anything, and they start to give him a beatdown. But Mephisto turns on the Council of Red, and this turns into a freaking bloodbath. Mephisto of 616 he cuts, he stabs, he smashes, and even as their bodies pile up around him, their blood burns fresh, he finds the massacre of his other selves oddly unsatisfying. These are not the people that he wishes to be slaughtering, but the council has been weakened by its war with the Avengers, while he has only grown stronger, empowered by the ravaging of Earths, siphoning the essence from each of these ruined universes, all for this moment. This is where we see the blood and the guts of all the other Mephistos, 
they start to be absorbed into 616. And Mephisto has just turned himself into the freaking Megazord of all Mephistos. Now, having this immense amount of power, he begins to crack the ground. Off in the distance, we have the war that is still raging. Our Avengers are fighting off this Doom army. But our goddesses of thunder, they hear something in the distance. There is something big. A new storm is brewing and they know that something is coming. With Ant-Man making his way through the battlefield, the god of hammers gets in communication. They need every Thor that they can get out here right now. But he is letting Ant-Man know that they found the last Mephisto. He is chasing them down everybody needs to be ready for his arrival because they are going to need more avengers this is where we see a 20 story tall mephisto he's coming and he is taking down the helicarrier that is the Caracor's main base with one fail swoop he cuts this massive aircraft right in half this is when ant-man gets in contact with avenger prime letting him know that they just lost a Carol Carrier, and they have a Celestial-sized Mephisto and a Doom the Living Planet that are out here just decimating the battlefield, hoping that Avenger Prime has something up his sleeve. Right now, he is a little preoccupied facing against Doom Supreme. And while he struggles a little bit in this battle, he lets Ant-Man know that more Avengers have already been called. All that he asks them is that they keep an open mind about some of them. This is where we have Kazar come in, reporting for duty. They haven't seen him since he was lost in time, back in Avengers issue number 50. But while he was lost in time, he found something. He found a new power, the Power Cosmic. And this isn't the only Avenger that is showing up for this battle, because he is the Herald for Galactus. The Planet Eater has arrived, and as of now, an honorary Avenger. Galactus telling Khazar that he said that there was going to be something that he could devour. Promised the meal of a lifetime if they traveled through time to this strange land. And Khazar points him directly to doom the living planet. But that's not all that's there. This is where we have Gorilla Man. Former Avengers Mountain Head of Security, and he is now looking to reapply, bringing along with him the Russian Super Bear. He also brought just a little bit more than that, because right now they are riding in your friendly neighborhood Dead Celestial, but this thing is no longer dead. It is now very much alive, and it says to call it Deathlock. This is where we see this Celestial just cleaning up the battlefield of all these Doom variants. With a single blast of its gun, it wipes away half the battlefield. Mephisto still focused on breaking the ground. All of our heroes, they prepare. They get ready for battle. The Goddesses of Thunder, they all pick up a Mjolnir. The lightning running through their bodies. And we hear the war cry echoed through the battlefield. Avengers Assemble! We are immediately picking up with Galactus starting to devour the planet Doom. Usually the sight of Galactus feeding is something that is feared across the cosmos. But here and now at Infinity's End, in the midst of this giant war, what you hear instead of cries of terror are the cheers. You have the Avengers, you have all of the Caracor, all of the Steve Rogers. They are all cheering. These cheers are almost as loud as the dying whales of this living planet. And so as the planet slowly begins to get devoured, we hear the cry across the battlefield. The two words being said over and over again, Avengers assemble. From the goddesses of thunder to Odin himself. The words are war cries for the core, for the Steves, for the savage lord of the power cosmic, for old man Phoenix. The words are a howl of defiance in the face of ruin, in the face of doom. The words are a conjuring, empowered by the souls of heroes fallen, their voices echoing still. The words are a declaration defying time and space, 
defying the bounds of reality itself. The words are power and the words are hope. As we see the teams moving on on Mephisto across the battlefield. Mephisto saying Avengers assemble but laughing at the idea. Telling them that they can assemble all the mighty heroes from the multiverse that they can muster. But it is already too late. As he continues to pound at the ground. He is waiting for that ancient power underneath to explode from beneath the god quarry. And once it has fully been unleashed, they will at last see the great red truth. As Mephisto does what he can to break through the crust, this is where Deathlock comes into play. The whisper of the last Deathlock left standing at Infinity's End. The Deathlock who has become a Celestial, having a gun the size of the grave piled full of his fallen brothers. He fires that weapon and Mephisto takes a heavy blow. Mephisto letting Deathlock know that there will be nothing that stops him. As he begins to eat his own guts to continue his power, he will do whatever it takes to win a victory. As these two colossal giants begin to battle, across the battlefield we see that Doom Supreme has been chained up. Our Avenger Prime and Namor doing what they can to try and defeat him. But even locked away in these chains, we see Doom Supreme be able to break free. He reiterates what Mephisto has already said. Their great assembling is already too late. The God Quarry is already crumbling. The ocean of power that lies beneath, it shall be released. This is where we get an unsuspected guest. One we thought was no longer here. We have the Dark Phoenix who shows up. And at first, we believe that the Dark Phoenix is coming here to punish Doom Supreme. But what we see is Doom take off his mask and these two embrace as lovers. That's what picks us up with the Allrider and Starbrand. They are watching this enormous battle take place and there's not really much they can do. If Starbrand is to use her power anymore, it will continue to age her. While the Allrider, he is having trouble summoning the Ghost Rider. Both of them know exactly why this is. Robbie is having issues summoning the Ghost Rider, more because he's worried about what he can become. The truth is, Robbie is almost gone. He fears that eventually All Rider will be all that remains. That there will be nothing but the Rider. That Robbie would be turned to ash. And so in this moment, these two have never related more to one another than they do right now. And as they watch this battle unfold, Phoenix Wielders, a couple of Sorcerer Supremes, the entire Carol Corps, all of the legacy powers appear to be well represented. All of them, but two. They know that they cannot win this battle without them. And so regardless of what it may mean for their lives after this battle, they are going to join the fight. Starbrand activating her powers and Robbie having the Ghost Rider take over. These two have entered the battle and they are laying down the hate. Meanwhile, we have the Dark Phoenix, who we just learned is also the lover of Doctor Doom, the Doom Supreme. When the Avengers get word that there is another Phoenix inbound, the Dark Phoenix lets it be known that this is not another Phoenix. She is the Phoenix. What Mystique didn't know is that they were not talking about her. They were talking about Thor's mother. Coming up to Thor, she lets him know that she followed the sound of the thunder across the heavens. Seeing how much her son has grown, Thor is in an absolute shock. Shocked that she came all of this way through time and space just for him. And she lets it be known that she would cross all of eternity if it meant making sure that nobody lays a hand on her son. And so, as mother and son, they show the Dark Phoenix exactly what they are capable of. Throwing Mjolnir as hard as he can into the Dark Phoenix. The hammer empowered with Phoenix power as well. We see this hammer hit Mystique and she goes falling to the ground. With a giant explosion, this was the last blast that the ground needed. Now the power begins to leak from deep below. And while there is this immense amount of power underneath, 
Mephisto only needs a single drop to finish this. With that drop touching his finger, we see him transform yet again. This is when they feel the tide of battle changing in an instant. They yelling the words Avenger Assemble, that's not going to save them today. All this time as Deathlocks fighting to protect the God Quarry, they thought of it as some sort of defensive barrier. They thought of it as a wall. But this is not a wall. This was a dam, holding back the waters of all-consuming nothingness. As the Avengers watch this leaking out from the ground, the liquefied leavings of an ancient multiverse. When Captain America tells everybody to be ready to run, Avenger Prime lets it be known that there is nowhere to run. Nowhere in any universe that they could go to get away from this. You see, Mephisto's grand plan was never to rewrite existence. It was to end it all together. And so now Mephisto, empowered with this very ancient multiversal power, more powerful than any Mephisto has ever been, as we stand on the precipice of the final battle. Alright gang, as the ancient god quarry begins to break open, we see an unending ocean of dark power. A cosmic swamp made up of the rotting remains of the first firmament, of the existence that came before this one. The waters begin to flood the whole area. We see heroes and villains alike taken under. And in all the chaos, we have the one and only Captain America who is trying to come to the rescue. Trying to get everybody to high ground. To save as many souls as they possibly can. But Iron Man is letting him know that these waves are exploding in every direction, including up. They need Avengers Mountain to teleport them out of here. The only problem, there is nowhere to run. These floods will sweep across all realities, drowning planets and civilizations alike. It will drown entire universes. And so when the question goes out, that what do we do? How do we stop it? There is no answer. Death's waves are crashing against them. And this seems to be an all-consuming, all-ending wave of destruction. As this wave is about to crash over on Captain America, that is where Old Man Phoenix comes into play. He is able to freeze the wave in midair. Using the Phoenix power, he holds back this destructive wave. And he tells everybody that whatever you're gonna do, you must do it fast. Because even the Phoenix cannot hold back this power for long. And so while Logan holds all of this back with the Phoenix power, Doom and Mephisto have a conversation. The conversation is along the lines of Mephisto wanting to die. He had been reigning in hell long before humankind ever existed, but he has found no more joy in life. No more joy in torture and anguish and hurting and killing. He is tired of the monotony of life, of existing. He brought on these waves so that he could end his life. Along with his life, he would take everything with him. No more noise, just silence. And Doom tells him that if you want your life to end, I will oblige you. As he strikes down Mephisto, he goes to grab hold and harness the power of this great energy and great quantities. This god quarry power, it would take over any wielder. But in controlled amounts, small tiny increments, someone may be able to wield it, to use it. As Doom grabs a small part of this power, we see this power begin to expand. It begins to grow. It begins to suck in Doom. That is because our Tony Stark Iron Man had just shot it. Using his technology, he made the size of this mass increase. With its increase, Doom Supreme was unable to escape in time. And so Doom Supreme, he is turned to stone and Ant-Man shrinks him down to a pocket size 1 16th figure. Mephisto still alive, just observing what they have done. Ant-Man turning to him and letting him know that he is next. This is when Avenger Prime chimes in, letting all of them know that they must seal the breach in the God Quarry. 
that even his power is not enough to hold this back. As Valkyrie does everything she can using the all weapon to help old man Phoenix, his adamantium bones are beginning to buckle by the sheer power of all of this. They are running out of options. They are running out of time. That is where Deathlock comes into play. The giant celestial coming in, he puts his hand on this breach. He seals it, but only for a moment. Avenger Prime lets him know that the last of the loyal Deathlocks returns to his post as always. The multiverse provides, but he tells him that you must understand even in celestial form, this could be the end of you. And so he holds it back. He does everything he can, but his hand begins to splinter. It begins to crack. It begins to tear Deathlock apart. With the Thunder Gods and Goddesses coming in, they come to cauterize the wounds and now everyone is wondering where are the phoenixes that is where thor's mother and echo begin to come in but as they do they are stopped by the dark phoenix she comes in to make one last play but our phoenixes they aren't stopping nothing is getting in their way the two of them together their combined might brings down the dark phoenix in a singular fantastic blow and so with the Dark Phoenix being dispatched, we see Deathlock lose his hand, trying to stop this breach. It was too much power, it was too much force, and this Celestial just had his hand blown off. The other Phoenixes meeting up with Old Man Logan, with all three of these Phoenixes using their power to hold back all of this water. That is where Thor comes in. The fire that was breathed into him the day he was born by his mother. The fire of the almighty Thor, son of the Thunderbird. He launches his great power, and we see that at least temporarily this wave has been held off. That it is driving the water back. But the only problem is that they don't have a plug. This is where Starbrand and the All Rider come into play. We see the All Rider begin to resurrect Doom the Living Planet. The multiversal spirit of vengeance, nothing is beyond his power, not even the walls of death. If it exists, he can make it his ride. And that is exactly what he does. He pieces this planet back together, and he sends it to be a giant plug. The planet of vengeance coming in, and it lands directly in the hole. And it plugs it up, at least temporarily. But even this is not enough to hold back this power. We see Doom the living planet, it begins to crack. That's when our goddesses, they bring down the Mjolnirs. First, just a couple trying to hold it down. But even with three hammers on Doom the Living Planet, it is still moving. And so they call every Mjolnir that they have. With this being enough just for the moment, Mephisto is laughing at them saying that there is nothing they can do. Everyone tired of hearing his voice, this is when our Sorcerer Supreme makes him disappear. He is ensuring that he will have eternal punishment. That he will never see death that he will live on forever. But the phoenixes are officially tuckered out. If the dam breaks again, they do not have enough fire to hold it back. This is when Iron Man says that someone has to blast it closed from the inside. That is the only way to truly stop this. And so Starbrand activating her power, she knows that it is her time. While the Avengers try to tell her no that she is just a child, she knows that she is a Starbrand. This is the kind of thing that she lives for. This is the kind of thing that Starbrands die for. But Robbie refuses to let this happen. We see the All Rider, he takes off. With Starbrand telling him that he doesn't have to do this. That that is why she is here. He tells her that it's not. And that no one outraces the All Rider. We see him crash into this. The car going deep down into the God Quarry. It is time for the All Rider to have one last ride. Putting the pedal to the metal, all the way to hell, we see a giant fiery explosion, and this breach has finally been sealed. All of existence was just saved by a kid and his hot rod. 
The breach has been sealed. The dooms are all in custody. And our heroes now mourn all of their losses. Now they must decide what becomes of those who had lost their worlds. They may have just saved the entire multiverse. But it doesn't mean that things just go back to the way they were. 615 Earths still lay in ruins. But as warped a world as they may have become, those are the worlds that gave birth to them. So even if they could change them back, then these versions of them, the ones who just fought a war to save the fate of all Earths, would cease to exist. And while some would love for their Earth to disappear, that it's a hellish landscape that they came from, there are others like the Howling Commandos that don't want their lives taken. This is where we see Thor's mother walk off. As the Phoenix and Starbrand sit down next to one another, they have a conversation. We have Death Celestial, who is currently weeping. He is weeping for Starbrand, because Deathlock knows what must be done. Both of them are feeling the same call. It is going to take everything that they have, but their powers together. They can do something unique. While everybody is off discussing what is about to happen, what their next course of action may be. The two of them walk off into the distance, getting ready to do what is necessary. Old Man Phoenix and Echo, they know that there is nothing that they can do, that this has to be the way it is. When Echo asks why it has to be them two, it is because they have the most to lose, the most to offer the cosmic fates in trade. They are the heart of all of this and the always in living form. A baby star brand and the mother phoenix. The two of them combining their power, life and love incarnate, now and forever. The two of them save all the worlds that were in ruins. And throughout time, we see all of our heroes sent back into the past, sent back into the future, sent back to exactly where they belong. The goddess is now hanging out with old man Logan, but no longer having the power of the phoenix. Echo has found her way to Asgard with Thor, also no longer being connected to the phoenix. Namor being locked away in prison for his crimes. Even though he is granted the title of Avenger by Captain America, Namor says that he is not an Avenger and he is not the King of Atlantis that he must face punishment for the things that he has done. And in the North Pole, the statues erected of Robbie and Starbrand, so that they may never forget the Avengers that stood here this day and saved the multiverse. And the Nether Realms, we have Valkyrie who has been looking for both the Starbrand and Allrider, but she has yet to find them in heaven or in hell. Not sure where they are, they are somewhere out there in existence. Down in hell we have Mephisto, back down where he belongs living out his days. And the person to keep him company through all of this is Orb. As Orb sits there and he talks and talks and talks, Mephisto wishing he could just end his life. We have Avengers that are finding new purposes. The Tony Stark Ant-Man wanting to really make Starbrand and the Phoenix's sacrifice worth something. They have a lot of work ahead of them, a lot of Earths to save. And so while they get to work in the sea beyond the God Quarry, all is still in silence. In that darkness, there is a light, a light that searches the nothingness for what it has lost. Even trapped within a sea of horrible darkness, Slowly tearing him apart, the Ghost Rider endures. He works, rebuilding his car, and he waits. Waits for the chance to take one more ride. That long ride home. And that will be the end of this story. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Not a horrible ending. Not the worst ending that I've got. This story, like I said the whole time, it's been subpar. It wasn't the greatest thing. It might be a story better read all together in one go. But there are some interesting things that happened in here. We see that Echo is no longer the Phoenix. We see that Old Man Logan no longer has the Phoenix power. Now, this doesn't mean that the Phoenix is gone forever. 
but at least for the time being, there is no person that is wielding the Phoenix Force. It's possible that the Phoenix Force is gone completely with the rebirth of all these planets, and there is still no sign of Starbrand. But it looks like Robbie is still out there. He is still alive. The All Rider still existing, putting his vehicle back together. Maybe one day we will see him rise again. Maybe one day he will return from this darkness that he finds himself in. I do find it a little disappointing that Robbie didn't die. The fact that you kept him alive after all of that... It kind of takes away from its sacrifice. The same goes with Starbrand. They say that they can't find her in heaven or hell. Which means that the Starbrand, this Starbrand could still exist. Which again, takes away from the huge sacrifice that they made. You know, the, the stories like this always make me think of, of the story of Jesus Christ. How he, he died for his sins, but was resurrected three days later. So can you truly call it a sacrifice? If you are still alive, if you're still fine, you didn't do the ultimate sacrifice. You just did something that was a little bit hard, and you were there a couple days later. I find it a silly part of stories that really takes away from the sacrifice that these individuals have made. This is supposed to be the ultimate sacrifice. You sacrifice your life so that everybody can live. But when it comes to comic books, sacrificing your life hardly ever actually means you dying. But it'll be interesting to see what the Phoenix Force is going to do once all of this has really cleared the waters. Once we get to the other side and see where it all is going to land. I know a lot of people weren't happy with Echo being the Phoenix. So now the question is, where will the Phoenix go? Let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you would like to get completely caught up on everything that happened with Avengers and Avengers Assemble. Be sure to check out the links in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers. From $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to getting comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. If you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.